doctor is always available on call. It's an oncologist. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, why did the doctor decide to get into dermatology? Oh, no reason in particular. It was just a rash decision. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. It's Ryan here again with our 72nd mnemonic in internal medicine. And I bring warm greetings in the precious name of my Lord and Savior Jesus. I hope you guys are well. So today we're touching on microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, the Mahas. We've got a nice little acrostic here, which goes hyperheme hem hemo past the salt DD. <laughs> but um, guys, first allow me to encourage you with some scripture. You know, I'm sure we are all looking forward to some kind of plan in our lives, some kind of goal we want to achieve, that we want to come to fruition. Let's look at what scripture says in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. It says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? And Romans 8, verse 28 declares, All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who have been called in accordance with His purpose. God is able to help you to achieve your goals. Just commit yourself to Him, surrender yourself to Him, and watch how He will work with you in your life. Amen. <clears throat> so let's get into Maha. So microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. What is this Maha? <clears throat> it's also termed fragmentation hemolysis and is characterized by non-immune hemolytic anemia. So often the Coombs will be negative with schistocytosis. So in your peripheral smear, you will see our beautiful schistocytes. Okay. The, the acrostic goes like this. Hyper speaks to malignant hypertension. Right? And we know this is going to be associated with, with flame-shaped hemorrhages, cotton mouth spots, and papilledema on phonoscopy. Hem, uh, sorry, hem speaks to cavernous hemangiomas, especially in the liver. So hepatic cavernous hemangiomata. Hem speaks to hemolytic edemic syndrome. We'll be talking a little bit about that later on in the video. Hemo speaks to valve hemolysis, especially in the way of artificial valves, right? Your metallic valves. <clears throat> Pass speaks to severe preeclampsia. The speaks to thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, TTP. We'll also be talking about this a bit later. SODS speaks to scleroderma renal crisis. And then the two Ds is DIC, the infamous disseminated intervascular coagulation, as well as disseminated carcinomatosis. All of these things can cause uh, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about disseminated intravascular coagulation. We often see this in the setting of severe sepsis most commonly. The pathophysiology is that this damage to endothelium, which then releases tissue factor, which then causes massive activation of the coagulation cascade and eventually intravascular coagulation and depletion of our beloved clotting factors. Causes are numerous. So you have trauma, shock, sepsis, especially you know, E. coli and Neisseria, meningitis, and malaria. Neoplasms can also cause it in the way of lung, prostate, pancre pancreatic. Obstetric causes as well, like abruptio placentae, um, preeclampsia, and amniotic fluid embolus. Okay, clinical features of DIC would be you have a typical microangiopathic hemolytic anemia with thrombocytopenia, bleeding and or thrombosis. You may even have ischemia with a raised INR and a raised PTT, diminished fibrinogen, although it can be normal or even elevated in the acute phase. So fibrinogen can go either way, but usually it's low. You have a raised D-dimer and a diminished factor 8 Right. And this is a big departing factor from liver disease, because in liver disease, you often have a normal factor 8. But in DIC, your factor 8 will be down. And of course, if you do a peripheral smear, you know, you observe our beautiful schistocytes. And the treatments for DIC is usually to treat and address the underlying cause and its complications. Right, So also address hypoxia, dehydration, acidosis, and acute renal failure. You want to deplete your coagulation factors with the FFPs or FDPs, and you want to give fibrinogen in the way of cryoprecipitate. Because remember that your FTPs do not contain fibrinogen. If you want fibrinogen, you've got to use cryoprecipitate. All right. Uh, especially if the patient's deficient of fibrinogen and bleeding. And anticoagulation, if you've got concomitant thrombosis, so consider IV heparin 2 to 500 international units per hour via infusion. Okay. And let's now shift gears and talk to thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, TTP. The pathophysiology here has to do with uh, this beautiful uh, enzyme and its diminished activity called ADAMTS13. A disintegrates and metalloproteinase with thrombospondin 13 like motif. Right, Adam's T13, uh, uh, Adam TS13, 
right? And it has yeah, diminished RMTS-13 activity, which then leads to failure to degrade the unusually large uh, multimers of von Neubauer factor. And as a result, we have uh, agglutination of platelets, and then we have arteriola thrombi, which then causes systemic ischemia to the brain, the kidneys, the gut, and the heart. The cause is autoantibodies geared against RMTS-13. Clinical features would be Amaha in 100%, thrombocytopenia in 90%, together with renal dysfunction, fever in some 90 to 100%, neurological abnormalities in 90%, with delirium, focal neurological uh, deficits, seizures, and coma. <coughs> Excuse me. Schistocytes also occur in the peripheral smear. How do we treat this? With full volume plasma exchange in the way of plasmaspheresis with FFP infusions. You can use steroids and rituximab if it's non-resolving and refractory. You want to avoid platelet transfusion, aspirin, and anti-motility agents. Um, of course, you know, TTP has a very really high mortality without treatment. Let's speak to a cousin of TTP, which is hemolytic uremic syndrome. And here the pathophysiology is exposure to our beautiful sugar toxin, or there's a defect in plasma factor H, which then leads to arteriolar thrombi, predominantly causing renal involvement. The causes are E. coli 0157H7 variant. Clinical features here will be a maha in 100%, thrombocytopenia in some 90%, renal dysfunction in 90%, and you'll have schistocytes on the peripheral smear. Treatment is supportive care only. It does not respond to plasma exchange, and you want to avoid antibiotics unless the patient is overtly septic. What is Evans syndrome? Evans syndrome refers to a combination of immune thrombocytopenic purpura and alloimmune hemolytic anemia. All right. So there you have it, guys. A beautiful acrostic to remember. Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia is hyperhemhemhemo past the salt DD. Yeah. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful day.